We all saw it posted yesterday all over our social media pages. Cassie filed a lawsuit in New York City against Diddy. Yikes. She's claiming she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse. Rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein-type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof of anything other than that. Clive Davis and C and Diddy Combs, two names that have been synonymous with power and influence in the music industry for decades. But behind their glossy, multi-million dollar empires, shocking revelations have started to emerge about the true nature of their relationship and the dark, hidden world they operated in. What if the very success of one of the most iconic figures in hip-hop was built on manipulation, control, and a whole lot of secrets that are just starting to come to light? Every aspect of her life, he is accused of frequently beating her and would hide her in hotel rooms for days until the bruising and signs of abuse were gone. The story starts with Clive Davis, a towering figure in the music business. He's the man behind some of the most famous artists we know today. From Whitney Houston to Alicia Keys, Davis has been the gatekeeper to success for decades. But his latest bombshell isn't about any new talent he's discovered. It's about the past. And more specifically, it's about Diddy. In recent months, rumors have swirled that Davis has grown increasingly concerned about the legacy he's leaving behind, and it's not just about his impact on the music world. It's about the skeletons he and Diddy have kept buried for so long. At 90 years old, Davis could have quietly retired, resting on his laurels after a legendary career. Instead, he's speaking out. But why now? Some insiders say it's because Davis is haunted by the decisions he made and the people he helped elevate to the top E, particularly Diddy. As someone who's been open about his bisexuality, Davis's relationships have always been a topic of interest. But whispers about an alleged romantic relationship between him and Diddy have started to resurface, adding an unexpected layer to this already explosive story. I was concerned. I was totally straight uh, until through my second marriage. I've got four kids and grandkids. Um, For years, Diddy has maintained his public image as a business mogul, a mentor to young artists, and a flashy personality who knows how to throw the most extravagant parties. But behind the scenes, there's a different side of him that has remained largely hidden, until now. According to multiple sources close to both men, Clive Davis is no longer willing to stay silent about the things he's seen and heard over the years, especially when it comes to how Diddy handles young artists. There are some problems that are the defense has brought up originally, but it seems like just from reading this 14 page indictment that there is enough physical evidence to perhaps get a conviction in this case. We well shall see. These are allegations. Davis, who helped shape the careers of countless stars, has reportedly grown disillusioned with the way the music industry, particularly hip hop, has evolved under the influence of figures like Diddy. And while Diddy may be a genius at branding and business, the methods he's allegedly used to build his empire are starting to raise some serious red flags. What's most alarming about these revelations isn't just the idea that Diddy manipulated artists into unfair contracts or shady business deals. It's the darker rumors about how he operated socially. Davis has been linked to these claims as well, suggesting that the relationship between the two men went beyond business. One insider revealed that Davis had been kept up at night, worrying about the role he played in Diddy's rise to fame, not just as a mentor, but as someone who may have enabled Diddy's more sinister behavior. Well, that's the interesting part here. And so what the plaintiff in this case did was filed for what we call a temporary restraining order, which would have prevented Diddy or would prevent him from selling that Los Angeles home. And so we know, or at least we believe that that TRO was granted to enjoin or stop him from selling that home. And here's where the story takes a wild turn. Diddy's infamous parties, known within certain circles as freak-offs. These events were the epitome of glamour and excess. Exclusive, invite-only affairs attended by some of the biggest names in entertainment. But these weren't just regular parties with good music and expensive champagne. No, these were events where, according to multiple accounts, the lines between business and pleasure blurred in ways most people could never imagine. Well, if he really was filming everybody, I mean, he had a lot of people at those parties, right? The stories that have come out about these parties paint a picture of something much more disturbing than just wild nights of dancing and drinks. Insiders claim that Diddy used these gatherings to exert control over young artists, many of whom were new to the industry and dazzled by the chance to rub shoulders with music royalty. But beneath the surface, these parties may have been part of a calculated strategy to manipulate those same artists into making deals they didn't fully understand. Deals that would leave them locked into contracts with bad boy records for years, even decades, without truly benefiting from their own success. These are all allegations that have become shockingly familiar against Diddy in recent months as he has faced lawsuit after lawsuit from women and men who have accused him uh, of, of all manner 
of, of bad behavior. Usher is one of the few stars who has publicly alluded to what really went down at some of these parties. In interviews, he's mentioned how he witnessed things that he couldn't quite comprehend at the time. I went there to see the lifestyle, Usher has said, hinting that what he saw wasn't something he could easily process. It was more than just extravagant. It was overwhelming and not in a good way. Others who attended these events described them as surreal and chaotic, with young artists often being swept up in the frenzy, too inexperienced to realize what they were getting into. I believe that there are several people that wanted Bobby Christina dead, but I think the purpose of her death was to gain full access to Whitney Houston's estate. And this is where Clive Davis's role becomes even more intriguing. It's been suggested that Davis, as Diddy's mentor, had a hand in orchestrating these events, or at the very least, turned a blind eye to what was really happening. According to those close to him, Davis now regrets his involvement and the way he helped facilitate Diddy's rise to power. Some even speculate that Davis's silence over the years was part of a larger, unspoken agreement between the two men, a pact that is now crumbling as Davis edges closer to the end of his life and seeks some kind of redemption. Davis reportedly began speaking out after hearing disturbing accounts from some of Diddy's former protégés, young rappers who had once idolized the bad boy mogul and were lured by promises of fame and fortune. These artists have painted a grim picture of their experiences under Diddy's wing, from being pressured into signing ironclad contracts that heavily favored bad boy records to being manipulated into situations they didn't fully understand at the time. For the purposes of financial gain for those who have access to her estate, including Clive Davis. Including Clive Davis. Clive. One former insider who worked closely with Bad Boy Records shared this chilling insight. They think they've made it. They're living the life. Penthouse suites, parties, everything. But when it comes down to the paperwork, they've basically signed away their future. This kind of exploitation has been part of the music industry for a long time. But what makes Diddy's case stand out is how deep the manipulation allegedly went. According to sources, it wasn't just about money and contracts. It was about control. Control over every aspect of these artists' lives, from their careers to their personal relationships. And then there's the matter of Diddy's preferences, which have long been the subject of rumors and speculation. His lavish lifestyle has always included beautiful women, but some insiders say that behind closed doors, things were far more complicated. There have been whispers for years that Diddy's real interests lie elsewhere, and that some of these infamous parties were more about indulging those preferences than anything else. It's these rumors that have started to come to the surface now, with Clive Davis's revelations adding fuel to the fire. We know some of the big names. I'm just curious if you have any names. You don't seem like uh, somebody... Uh, well, well for, number, number one was Clive Davis. The relationship between Diddy and Davis reportedly began during the golden era of bad boy records, when Diddy was rising to the top of the hip-hop world, and Davis was already a titan in the industry. At the time, it seemed like a perfect mentor-mentee relationship. Davis, with his decades of experience and connections, guiding Diddy, the young, ambitious mogul, through the often treacherous waters of the music business. But as more details come to light, it's clear that their relationship was far from ordinary. The evidence, alleged evidence, that's been gathered in this case was from those two raids that were conducted on his personal homes in Miami and Los Angeles. And the indictment names the um, the... the Things seized that they that he allegedly made videos of these sexual performances as, mm -hmm. that have been named freak offs. There are rumors that their bond went beyond business and may have even been romantic. While neither man has openly confirmed this, the whispers have persisted for years, and recent revelations suggest that there may be some truth to them. According to insiders, Davis and Diddy shared more than just a professional connection. They were intimately involved in each other's lives in ways that went far beyond music. Never apparent to me any meeting I had with her any interchange I had with her. She was on top of her game. Davis, who came out as bisexual several years ago, has hinted in interviews that his relationships have always been complex. But it's only now, with these new allegations, that people are starting to wonder just how deep his connection to Diddy really went. Some sources claim that Davis's influence over Diddy wasn't just about helping him navigate the business. It was about control, pure and simple. And Diddy, in turn, may have learned how to manipulate others by watching his mentor. One particularly disturbing claim is that Diddy's freak-off parties weren't just a place to unwind after a long day of work. According to multiple insiders, these parties were carefully curated environments where young artists were introduced to a world they weren't ready for, a world where Diddy held all the power and they were just pawns in his game. 
These events, while glamorous on the surface, were allegedly used to break down boundaries and make these artists more pliable, more willing to sign contracts that they might have otherwise rejected. Davis has always assumed a far more active role than most record company presidents. That's why he was a pioneer in the 60s. It's also why he has survived into the 80s. One anonymous source who attended one of these parties described it as bigger, crazier, and more intense than anything they had ever experienced. There was so much pressure to fit in, to be part of the scene. The source revealed, if you didn't play along, you weren't invited back. And for young rappers trying to make it in the industry, being excluded from these events could mean missing out on career-defining opportunities. Clive Davis, for his part, has reportedly become increasingly troubled by what he's seen. According to one of his cult associates, Davis has grown tired of watching young artists get chewed up and spit out by the industry machine, particularly under Diddy's watch. Clive has seen enough, the associate said. He's watched Diddy for years, and he's tired of staying silent. The guilt Davis feels may be more personal than professional. Some insiders suggest that Davis's own involvement in Diddy's world, from their alleged relationship to the way he helped Diddy navigate the music industry, is what's really keeping him up at night. He's haunted by the idea that he helped create a monster, someone who has used his power and influence to manipulate and exploit others, just as Davis once did. That boy life is dangerous. His life is in, and he's just not dangerous with the they said he's doing, but he's in danger. He know too much. But the real question is, why is Davis speaking out now? Some believe it's because he's reached a breaking point. After decades of watching the music industry change and evolve, Davis may finally be ready to confront the darker aspects of the empire he helped build. Or perhaps he's simply tired of watching young artists fall victim to the same traps that ensnared so many before them. Whatever the reason, it's clear that Davis's decision to break his silence is a game changer. His comments about Diddy's parties and the way young rappers have been treated are not just a warning. They're a confession, and they're raising serious questions about how deep the corruption in the music industry really goes. Diddy has been under criminal investigation for months by federal prosecutors here in New York. And if there are criminal charges, many of them may look a lot like what some of these individuals have been describing. It's clear that what's happening with Clive Davis and Diddy is just the tip of the iceberg. But the deeper you dig into the music industry, the darker it gets. Diddy might be the center of attention right now, but he's not the only one involved in this shady business. This isn't just about one man's wild parties or manipulative contacts. It's part of a much bigger, more sinister network of power players who've been controlling the industry from behind the scenes for years. This is in the matter of Derek Lee Cardello Smith, um, MDOC number 267009 versus Sean Combs, Sean Puff Daddy Combs, also known as Sean P. Diddy, also known as Diddy, Bad Boy Records, label owner, comma, founder. And let's be real. Diddy didn't rise to the top alone. He had help. Lots of it. We're talking about some of the biggest names in the game. People like Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, and even some of the most powerful executives who prefer to stay in the shadows. It's almost like there's a secret society running things behind the curtain. And if you're not in the club, you're not making it big. Rumors have been swirling for years about these hidden networks of music moguls who pull the strings. They make deals, trade favors, and keep everything tightly locked down. And when someone like Clive Davis decides to finally speak out, you have to wonder, is the whole system about to unravel? I believe that somebody my niece, just like they her mother. Diddy's wild reputation, especially when it comes to those exclusive gatherings he's famous for hosting, is just one piece of this puzzle. While the stories of manipulation and exploitation tied to his events are bad enough, there's something even darker lurking beneath the surface. Some believe that Diddy's connections and the power he's wielded go far beyond contracts and industry influence. Could he be tied to more tragic events in hip-hop's history, like the untimely losses of Shakur and the notorious B.I.G.? It sounds like the stuff of conspiracy theories, but the whispers about Diddy's role in these events have never quite gone away. If you add all that type of stuff up, and you'll see how the, in the industry been built on the secret room. If you dig a little deeper, there are plenty of people who think Diddy was more involved than he's letting on. We know that during the height of the East Coast versus West Coast feud in the 90s, tensions between Diddy and Shaker's camp were at an all-time high. And let's not forget Biggie, who was one of Diddy's closest friends and greatest success stories, was caught right in the middle of that drama. Many have questioned just how much Diddy knew and what his involvement was. After all, it was under his watch that Bad Boy Records became a powerhouse, but it was also during that time that some of the most heartbreaking moments in hip-hop occurred. There are those who believe Diddy's connections to powerful figures in and out of the music world might have played a role in the tragedies surrounding Shakira and Biggie's stories, though no one has been able to prove it. 
But let's steer things back to what's been happening recently, because the past isn't the only thing that's suspicious here. Today's legendary gatherings, the ones insiders are now calling freak-offs, weren't just about high-profile guests mingling over champagne and caviar. No, these parties allegedly went a lot further than that. Some people who've been to these events are now sharing stories that make you wonder how deep Diddy's manipulation really went. From what insiders are saying, it wasn't just about impressing his guests with luxury, it was about control. At 3.55 p.m. this afternoon, Whitney Houston was pronounced dead at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. It's been reported that young artists were regularly invited to these lavish events, where they were plied with promises of success and given the chance to rub shoulders with the industry elite. But according to more recent accounts, these parties often ended up becoming environments where boundaries were blurred and pressure was placed on these young talents to play along. And let's be honest, when you're a young artist trying to make a name for yourself in an industry that's as cutthroat as this one, you're probably willing to do almost anything to fit in. That's where things get murky. Some who've attended these parties have said they saw things they never expected. It wasn't just the over-the-top luxury that left an impression. One attendee described how people were pressured into doing things they wouldn't normally do, all in the name of fitting in with the scene. The power dynamics at play weren't just about money. They were about control over people's futures, both professionally and personally. Of course, there's layers upon layers. <laughs> when you get into these f***ing conspiracy theories, man, they, they never end. They never end. There's just layers upon layers. And this control didn't end when the party was over. Many of these young artists left these events with contracts in hand, contracts they'd signed without fully understanding what they were agreeing to. According to some insiders, these deals were ironclad, locking the artists into arrangements that left them financially dependent on Diddy and Bad Boy records for years. And the worst part? Some of these deals were made while the artists were under intense pressure or weren't in the right state of mind to make clear-headed decisions. And if he's allowed to go through with any of the sales, I won't be able to recoup any of my monies or anything from him as a result of any possible judgment in this action, if he's allowed to proceed with it. And a, an injunction or a restraining order would help ensure that he's not manipulating and selling the property to avoid this. Take what one former artist under Bad Boy had to say, we were living the life. Diddy's parties were legendary. Mansions, fancy cars, anything you could dream of. But when it came to the business side, things didn't add up. We were signing away our futures, and by the time we realized it, it was too late. D. This paints a troubling picture of how the power Diddy wielded at these events extended far beyond the dance floor. It reached into these artists' careers and lives, leaving them trapped in contacts that favored only one person, D. Music is unique. Music is special. Music has a very... Uh, individual, uh, meaningful role in society. But let's not forget, Diddy wasn't just running these parties solo. Clive Davis, Diddy's mentor and one of the most powerful figures in the music industry, was often right there, either actively involved or simply turning a blind eye. According to some insiders, Davis knew exactly what was happening behind closed doors, and he's just as guilty for letting it continue. This dynamic between the two men, a mentor and his protege, has become one of the most talked about aspects of this whole saga. Now, if all of this sounds dark, there's more. Recently, rumors have surfaced that Diddy's influence may have extended into even more serious territory. Some have suggested that federal investigators have started looking into the activities surrounding these infamous gatherings. And while no official charges have been made, it's hard to ignore the whispers that are getting louder and louder. Could Diddy be tied to criminal activity that's finally starting to catch up with him? Only time will tell, but the fact that Clive Davis has started talking suggests that something big might be about to break. And Stacey, you say today's indictment reads like a mob indictment. What was most shocking to you of all these allegations? Yeah, the fact, Jake, that the government in, in this indictment presented evidence alleging that Sean Cones was running a criminal enterprise. One of Diddy's former bodyguards, Gene Deal, has already come forward with disturbing stories about his time working for the bad boy mogul. He described situations where Diddy was involved in activities that were far from professional, hinting that the party and the lifestyle Diddy led were a lot more questionable than anyone outside of his inner circle could have imagined. Gene's stories, paired with accounts from other insiders, paint a picture of a man who used his power to manipulate and control those around him, all while keeping up a carefully crafted public persona of a successful businessman. What's even more chilling is how some of these stories echo across the years. Several young artists who were once part of the Bad Boy Records family have struggled with depression, substance abuse, and feelings of betrayal after realizing that the dreams they were sold were nothing more than illusions. For some, the psychological toll of being used and discarded by Diddy's machine has left scars that will never heal. Some have even suggested that the toxic environment Diddy created was a major factor in the mental health struggles that many of his former artists faced. Located her body inside this hotel. So far, police and the coroner are refusing to offer details about what may have caused her tragic death.
it's not just the old stories that are resurfacing. New controversies are bubbling up as well. Recent rumors have hinted at the existence of videotapes that could expose what really went on at Diddy's notorious events. These tapes, if they exist, are said to be damning, showing people in compromising situations that they never agreed to be a part of. Some insiders are suggesting that these tapes are part of a much larger investigation into the music industry's darkest corners. And while no one knows for sure if these tapes will ever see the light of day, the very fact that they're being talked about has the industry on edge. Don had the choice to file the case as a Jane Doe, and she chose not to do that. After giving it a fair amount of thought, she wants accountability. She wants justice. And it's not just former bodyguards and insiders speaking out. Former protégés like Jaguar Wright have added their voices to the growing chorus of accusations. Wright has been vocal about the abusive dynamics that she claims existed behind the scenes, accusing not only Diddy, but other major players of engaging in manipulative and harmful behavior. Wright's stories are intense, with one incident involving a young artist being caught in a deeply uncomfortable situation that no one expected. These kinds of allegations are painting a grim picture of an industry where power and control are wielded not just for business success, but for personal gain. The more you hear, the more you realize that Diddy's control wasn't just about contracts and careers. It was about total domination. He allegedly created an environment where those around him were forced to do whatever it took to stay in his good graces. And if they didn't, well, they were out and out for good. For young artists who were just trying to make it in a brutal industry, that kind of pressure was immense. These men in the industry don't consider themselves gay. They consider themselves the mess with women. But let's be clear, Diddy's silence speaks volumes. Despite all the rumors, the allegations, and the shocking revelations, he hasn't said much publicly. Insiders say that this isn't out of fear. It's all part of a strategy. Diddy knows how to navigate controversy. He's been in the game long enough to understand that staying quiet can be just as powerful as issuing a public denial. For now, it seems like he's waiting for the storm to pass confident that he'll come out on the other side unscathed. But with Clive Davis breaking his silence and more people coming forward with their own stories, the pressure on Diddy is only going to increase. And the question everyone is asking now is, how much longer can he keep this up? How long before someone comes forward with undeniable proof of what really went on behind the scenes? The music industry might have protected Diddy for years, but it seems like those days are coming to an end. There's no punishment. If they protected by the road, the judge, the DA. As more artists and insiders find the courage to speak out, the full extent of Diddy's influence is starting to come into focus. It's not just about a few wild parties or bad contracts. It's about a culture of manipulation and control that has existed in the music industry for far too long. And with Clive Davis now lifting the lid on what really happened, the truth is starting to come out. So what's next? Is this just the beginning of a larger reckoning for the music industry? Will other powerful figures be exposed for their own roles in this toxic system? And how will Diddy respond as the pressure mounts? One thing is for sure, the music industry is never going to be the same after this. The real question is, who will be next to fall? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned as we uncover even more shocking details.